in this video, video number three of our building a kite board series, we are going to infuse the fiberglass skins that are going to get glued to the wood core. This is a little bit different than how boards are normally built. Normally the fiberglass is wet out and while it's still wet, it's applied to the core and put in a press. But we want to do it this way because we'll get a really good finish on both sides and it'll reduce the amount of post work that we have to do because we're not using a plastic top sheet like a commercial uh, kite board would. We're gonna take some 20 ounce triaxle e-glass. That's what's on this side over here. We're also gonna add a layer of vector net, which is an aramid uh, mesh to it. We're gonna put on a glass plate and we're gonna infuse that with ProSet INF 114 resin. So enjoy the video and I will see you on the other side. All right, so the first thing we're doing here is we're cutting down our fiberglass fabric. This is 20 ounce triaxial e-glass. That means there's three layers to it. One layer, the fibers run in the zero direction. Those will go the length of the board. The other two layers are plus and minus 45 degrees, and those will help give us some torsional stiffness. Tim's rolling that out on the glass, and if you'll note, we haven't put our sealant tape around the edge yet. Normally, we like to do that first so we don't get any strands of glass caught between the sealant tape and the mold surface. Right now he's putting down the vector net. We're doing all this dry, uh, so every, each layer is gonna go on dry and then we're gonna put the vacuum bag over it. The vector net's gonna help maybe give us a little more torsional stiffness uh, and increase that a little bit. So once he's got that in place, uh, he is now putting down the sealant tape. Like I said, normally we would do that sooner. We would do that first before we're even putting the fiberglass fabric on there. The other thing that we've done that we haven't shown you here is we've prepared the glass by putting down some release agent. Uh, R&B Easy is the one that we typically use, uh, and that will just ensure that the epoxy does not stick to the glass. Re really rare that that might happen, but it can happen if you forget the surface agent, or not surface agent, release agent. So he's getting that down. Uh, we overlap the corners and he, you can see he's running his hand down and just to make sure it's clear any fibers. Like I said before, if you do that ahead of time, uh, you'll know that you don't have any stray fibers getting under there. What will happen is that stray fiber causes a leak and the leak can ruin the whole infusion. Uh, so not having it under there is important. So once he's got that down, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna place some peel ply. And peel ply is a layer that we can remove from the part and it leaves a textured surface, so that'll help with the bonding. We won't need to do any extra prep to bond it. Uh, but because it's a, a weak layer that can be removed, that allows us to remove our flow media and other process materials that are on top of the glass and the vector net. So now we have that peel ply down and we also have our flow media down. The flow media creates a space between the bag and the fiberglass laminate that allows the resin to travel through there. So now we're sealing up the bag and we're just gonna go around and get that down. And having an airtight bag and an infusion is super important because once we get the resin in there, if we have a leak, uh, we can actually lose the whole part. So Tim's gonna go around and seal that up. And what we'll typically do is get it sealed, we'll pull some vacuum on it, uh, we'll lock off the pump and, and let it sit for usually 10 minutes and see if we get any drop. Uh, if there's no drop, we figure we're good, depending on what the gel time of our resin is. If it's a long gel time, we might let it go longer. If we get some drop, we'll either let it go a little longer to see if it continues to drop, uh, or we'll check the part, figure out why it's leaking, and do the test over. So right here he's putting a little rabbit ear pleat in. Uh, that pleat gives us some space to push the bag down around our feed or our vacuum tube, uh, depending on which side we're, we're working from. And those are super important because we don't want to actually stretch the bag over those things that are under, under it. Uh, we want to actually have extra bag that we can push down around them because if we stretch the bag, what will happen is as it fills with resin, uh, it naturally wants to spring back and it will have a resin rich area. Um, so anytime you have things under the bag like your hose or protrusions like the uh, vacuum cups or anything, you want to put a, a pleat in there and make sure you have excess bag that you can push down around uh, those protrusions. 
So one of the nice things about Infusion is we can do some adjustments. I mean, I was pointing out here that our peel ply had gotten flipped up and our hose was laying on the fiberglass and not on top of the peel ply. Uh, we're using an MTI hose um, for our vacuum out, and that's a Gore-Tex membrane over a spiral wrap. What happens when the resin hits that is it won't go into our vacuum line or into our resin trap. And it also allows uh, the resin that hits it first to stop and then the resin in other areas to catch up. But Tim was just taping up the end of that. Uh, you do need to tape the ends on your MTI hose to make sure no resin can get in them and make sure you have a good seal. Uh, so here we go, this is kind of what I was talking about. Um, we're trying to maximize the area on this plate and so he had some fibers there that were in the way uh, and he was trimming those and so we'll just want to watch when we do our test and make sure we don't have any leaks in that area uh, that's our gonna be our resin inlet so he's putting that in um, we've actually pulled some vacuum and tested it usually we'll do a first test before we put the the resin feed hose in uh, it eliminates one more variable and we've did done that and now we are installing our resin feed line into the bag uh, once that's installed we'll do another quick test just to verify that we have good vacuum integrity and then we'll begin to mix up our resin and go from there so he's just squeezing the clamp there make sure we're all good in this case we're going to use a pro set inf 114 uh, I think with the 211 hardener, it's either 211 or 210. Um, that 211 looks like it's what we have out there. We'll do a couple things first. The ProSet INF114 is a great infusion resin. It's got a nice low viscosity to it. We do usually heat it. Um, we'll heat the A side to about 110 and then uh, run the B side at room temperature. We're shooting to get a mixed temperature 95 to 100 degrees uh, and what that does for us is that lowers the viscosity even further and so now he's measuring out our B side uh, we'll get that mixed we are using the 211 which is the kind of medium uh, or slower hardener than the 210 that gives us a little extra time in case this wets out slowly so yeah there we are mixed temp we're right at 100 we like to be in that area that gives us a really nice low viscosity around 125-150 centipoids. So just kind of checking everything one more time. Uh, we do have that resin in a water bath and that'll help pull out any excess heat uh, if we need to and, and keep the resin from gelling in the pot. So here we go and we're off and running. Look at that. So. He's opened up the, uh, the clamp there, and we're just going to watch this thing wet out. So this is the cool part. You're not going to get messy. You're not going to get dirty, and you know, you're going to get a nice quality laminate, very little bubbles. So it turns out we didn't mix up enough resin, uh, and we're shutting down that hose real quick. So that's the other thing that can happen in infusion. You didn't mix up enough resin, you need to mix more. Uh, not really a big deal to shut that off temporarily. Uh, go mix up another batch and, and get it in there. And so in this case, that is what exactly what we did. We're running back and, and mixing up a little bit more and we'll, we'll keep that going. Uh, previous one that we did, we used a different flow media. We used the red flow, which is a lot slower and that's partly why we're, you know, in this case, well, and it, I think the red flow also uses a little bit less resin. Um, so now we've got that second batch of resin in there and we're off and running and we're going to finish wetting this out. And in this case, this one actually wet out pretty quickly. I don't recall the exact time, but it was probably sub 10 minutes. In fact, if we had, uh, yeah, he's marking it right there. In fact, if we had, you know, one big batch of resin, um, it definitely would have been a lot faster. So we're just going to let that flow on out. Uh, a couple things I want to note is we end the flow media, you know, about two or three inches away from our vacuum hose. 
So ending that flow media gives us a little area that allows anything that's not actually wet out underneath to catch up and that last little bit forces it to wet out through the fiberglass fabric itself instead of going through the flow media. Um, I just want to point that out because that is one of the areas where we get a lot of tech calls. You know, what's going on? I didn't get full wet out. I've got, you know, bubbles underneath and it usually turns out that they've ran their flow media all the way to the vacuum line. So what happens when the resin comes in is you get a pressure drop and, and you know if we could slice this and look at it a cross section right now while it's wetting out there's going to be a little bit more resin um, out towards the feed line than there is at the other end. Uh, so there's actually a little more resin in that area and the trick can be sometimes like right now we're not completely wet out and it's kind of a judgment call you got to make this call do I need to mix up more resin or can I get by with what we've already done um, in this case we probably could have gotten by with what we already did but we did mix up a little bit more so you can see we're almost completely wet out by the time he got that mixed up if you cut it off too soon, what will happen is the resin will try to redistribute itself. And, and that leads to a porous uh, laminate that has a lot of little pits in it. All right, so now that we've got our skins, we've got our rocker table, and we've got our core milled out. In the next video, we're gonna glue this all together in our rocker table. So we'll see you on that video. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.